To better understand our course on natural theology, we need to examine how natural theology is related to metaphysics in Thomas Aquinas. Since, according to Thomas Aquinas, natural theology forms the last part of metaphysics, in order to understand natural theology, we need to correctly understand how Thomas Aquinas views metaphysics as the science of being as being. Once we have seen this, we can examine how God is related with the object of metaphysics. As we do so, we will come to appreciate that natural theology is the highest form of human wisdom that we can attain. At the same time, this prepares the way for the study of the knowledge of God that can be obtained through faith in divine revelation. In this lecture, we will study four topics. First, we will examine how Thomas Aquinas considers science as the knowledge of things through causes. Second, we will examine how metaphysics is the science of being as being. And third, we will see how science is the highest and first science. And finally, fourth, we will see how metaphysics is theology or the study of God. It is important to recall that for Thomas Aquinas, metaphysics is a science. More specifically, metaphysics is the science that studies being as being. But more on that later. First, let us consider what a science is. Science for Thomas Aquinas and Aristotle is not just the knowledge of things or of many things. Rather, science is knowledge of things through or in the light of their causes or explanations. So a science for Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas is knowledge of things through their causes. Now, we have to keep in mind that the word cause is used here in a very specific way and is used in a much broader sense than it is used today in modern experimental sciences. For Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas, a cause or an explanation is an explanation, for example, of what a thing is made out of or what makes something to be this kind of thing or how this thing came to be what it is, or why is it what it is. Notice that these kinds of causes go beyond simply explaining what things are made out of or how physical forces interact with elementary particles. We will look at this more in a later lesson, but for now, let us keep in mind that Thomas Aquinas considers science to be the knowledge of a thing in the light of its causes or explanations. This means that it is not simply a knowledge of many things, nor is it simply the knowledge of things that comes from a lot of experience. Rather, it is scientific knowledge of things, which means that I know why things are the way they are, because I know their causes. Let's take, for example, pain relievers. All of us are familiar with different types of pain relievers, whether they be aspirin, paracetamol, or ibuprofen. Based on experience, we might even know the specific effects of these different pain relievers. My grandmother, for example, would know that she could use aspirin to relieve some type of back pain. This is a kind of knowledge of things. It's a kind of knowledge about pain relievers, and more specifically, knowledge of aspirin. 
it can also be knowledge that comes from experience. I know that aspirin works, but I might not know why it works. Science, on the other hand, is knowledge of things plus knowledge of why these things work and knowledge that comes from knowing the different explanations or causes of things. A doctor, for example, would know not only about different types of pain relievers, but she would know what pain relievers are made out of, what distinguishes one pain reliever from another, how pain relievers are produced, how they affect the human body's physiology, and so on. And so we can say that a doctor not only has a knowledge of things, but that she has a scientific knowledge of things. And by this, we mean that a doctor knows not only what they are and that they are effective, but also understands why they are effective. She knows this because she knows the explanations or causes of pain relievers. And this knowledge gives her a deeper understanding of what pain relievers are. Or take chicken noodle soup. It is possible to simply know chicken noodle soup through our immediate experience. But it is also possible to have the science of chicken noodle soup. This science, which we might call chicken noodology, would not only study or classify different types of chicken noodle soup, but would also seek to find the causes or explanations of chicken noodle soup. For example, what is chicken noodle soup made out of? What makes chicken noodle soup different from other types of soup? How does chicken noodle soup come to be made? And what is chicken noodle soup for? Notice that we are not just thinking a lot about chicken noodle soup. Instead, we are studying chicken noodle soup, wanting to understand chicken noodle soup in the light of its causes. That's what makes the science of chicken noodology a science and not simply a natural, spontaneous knowledge of chicken noodle soup, like the knowledge that a chicken noodle chef might have through experience. The difference between a chicken noodologist and the chef would be that the chef knows the art of making chicken noodle soup, but the chicken noodologist has a scientific knowledge of chicken noodle soup and thus understands why chicken noodle soup is good for you and what makes chicken noodle soup great. All this helps us better understand what Aquinas means when he says that metaphysics is a science. In contrast with the science of chicken noodology, which has as its object chicken noodle soup, metaphysics has as its object simply being. And since science is knowledge of things in the light of causes, we can say that metaphysics seeks to understand not just being, but also the causes or explanations of being. We will look at this in more detail in a later section. To have a more precise understanding of metaphysics as the science of being as being, let us turn to how Thomas Aquinas distinguishes the different sciences. The first distinction that Thomas Aquinas makes is between practical sciences and theoretical sciences. Practical sciences are aimed at action while theoretical sciences are aimed at contemplation. First, 
practical sciences. As we mentioned earlier, a practical science has as its aim some kind of action. That action can be a making or manufacturing of something, in which case we have different arts or crafts. For example, the science of shipbuilding has as its aim a certain action, in this case the action of building a ship. And building a ship has as its goal or end a finished ship. Another example is that of saddle making. The art or science of saddle making has as its aim an action, in this case a kind of making or making a saddle. And that action results in some kind of finished product, in this case a saddle. Aside from arts and crafts, which are practical sciences aimed at making something external, there is another practical science whose aim is moral action. The science of moral action is what we call ethics. Here, ethics has as its aim moral action. Moral action does not involve making something external to the subject. Rather, it results in either a good habit, which we call virtues, or a bad habit, which we call vice. So ethics is the practical science of moral action, and the result of moral action is not something external to the subject, but rather something internal to the subject, a habit, whether it be a virtue or a vice. So we can see that for Thomas Aquinas, practical sciences have as their aim some sort of action. This action can either be making something external, in which case we have an art or a craft, or the action can be a moral action, which results in virtue or vice. And the science of moral action is what we call ethics. Both arts as well as ethics are practical sciences because their aim or goal is action. Their aim is not contemplation of the truth, but the practical action of making or doing. On the other hand, the aim or goal of the theoretical sciences is to simply know the truth of things, to know things simply as they are in themselves. The goal of the theoretical sciences is contemplation of their object of study, not action. The theoretical sciences are, in turn, distinguished from each other according to their different subject matters or objects. Thus, for example, we can say that biology is the science that has as its object or subject matter living beings, while chicken noodleology has as its object chicken noodle soup. As for metaphysics, we can first say that it is a theoretical science since its aim is not action, but rather contemplation and knowledge. But what is the subject matter or object that metaphysics seeks to know? Thomas Aquinas and Aristotle respond that the object of metaphysics is not some kind of being, but rather just simply being. This is in contrast with other particular sciences whose objects are not simply being, but rather certain types of being. For example, biology studies beings that are alive. Chicken noodology studies those kinds of beings that are chicken noodle soup. Metaphysics simply studies being. Furthermore, as a science, metaphysics is not just knowledge of a lot of different types of beings, nor is it a knowledge based simply on a lot of experience, 
Rather, metaphysics is knowledge of being insofar as I understand the explanations or causes of being as being. That is, I want to know the explanations or causes of a being's being. For this reason, we say that the subject matter of metaphysics is being. And to express the fact that we want to understand the beingness of being, we say that we study being insofar as being, or being as being. And with this, we have a description of metaphysics as the science of being as being. Another characteristic of sciences in Thomas Aquinas is that the different sciences are hierarchically ordered. One important reason for this hierarchy is that while a particular science studies its own object, it assumes as given some of the principles of its object, but does not study these principles directly. Instead, these principles are the object of another science, which would then be considered a higher science. Take, for example, biology, which studies living beings, but generally takes the chemical and molecular underpinnings of life for granted. In this sense, we could say that although the object of biology is living beings, the study of living beings depends on chemical and molecular principles that are used, but not directly studied by biology. These chemical principles are, however, the object of another science, namely chemistry. Chemistry, in turn, might take as given certain principles that it uses, but does not directly study them. For example, the subatomic particles and fundamental forces that bind atoms and molecules together. But these particles and forces would themselves be the object of study of yet another science, which we call theoretical physics. We can thus see a certain ordering among these sciences. Biology, which depends on chemistry, and chemistry, which in turn depends on physics. We might ask ourselves, but does physics presuppose principles that it doesn't study directly? For example, time, being, change. What is time? What does it mean to be? What is change? Does physics study these? Or does it assume them as principles that are just given? If so, are these principles the object of a science that is higher than physics? And does that science in turn depend on an even higher science? How far does this hierarchy of sciences go? Is there a highest science beyond which we cannot go? Is there a science that studies the ultimate or first principles of being? In Aristotle's and Aquinas' view, there is such a science. This science, insofar as it studies not just particular kinds of beings, but rather being simply as being, would be the science upon which all other human sciences depend. It would therefore be the highest of sciences we can obtain with our natural powers. At the same time, insofar as this science seeks the first principles of being, it is also the first of all the sciences. As we have been seeing, 
this science which studies being as being is metaphysics. We can thus say that metaphysics is the highest and first of the sciences that we can attain with the natural powers of our intellect and reason. Although we have just seen how metaphysics is the highest and first science that we can humanly attain, we need to ask one further question. Does the object of metaphysics, that is, does being as being, presuppose and depend upon a higher principle or cause? If so, what is this principle? What is this first cause of being? Is this what we call God? Can we know God? As we will see in Lesson 2, we can know that God exists, but we cannot directly know what He is. This is because the beings that we know immediately and co-naturally are sensible material beings. So our natural knowledge of God comes only through some of His effects, namely the material beings that we co-naturally know. Thus, metaphysics as the study of being as being, also arrives at the existence of God as first cause of beings, but does not study God directly as his object. Insofar as metaphysics attains this certain type of knowledge of God, it can be called theology. And insofar as this knowledge is attained by use of natural light of reason, it is called natural theology. Here it is important to emphasize that in metaphysics, or natural theology, we arrive at a knowledge of God as principle or first cause of being, not as he is in himself. In other words, with our natural powers of knowing, we can know that God exists, but in this life we cannot have knowledge of what he is or what his essence is. God thus enters into the matter of metaphysics as the principle or cause of the object that metaphysics studies, that is, of being as being. But he is not studied directly in himself. Nevertheless, we can say that metaphysics brings us to the limit of what human reason can achieve without the aid of grace and of supernatural revelation and it thus can be considered the summit of human wisdom. Having said this, we might ask if there is any knowledge of God that we can attain in this life that goes beyond metaphysical, natural theology. Thomas Aquinas assures us that there is. He recognizes that we can have some access to the knowledge that God has of himself, but this can happen only insofar as God grants to us a participation in this knowledge by means of divine revelation and the supernatural lights of faith. This knowledge of God would constitute a distinct, non-philosophical, or better, super-philosophical science that earlier we called revealed theology. Revealed theology will be the topic of the last lesson. But for now, let us prepare ourselves to follow Thomas Aquinas along the paths of natural theology. <laughs>